Hi, welcome to Nishcraft. My name is Cassie and I'm your host. And today we are going to flip through one of my new craft books. Um, but first I wanted to thank a viewer named Jess who went to the channel wishlist and got me some blocking boards. Now, this is kind of funny because I actually didn't have any blocking boards. Um, this is, this comes in a pack of four. And what these are used and why it has this grid on it is that when you are making squares or different kinds of shapes that you are going to then crochet together or sew together. Um, it, this is one of those things that you can use to help block your project so that all of the squares are the same size. And I was going to get these for myself eventually anyway because I um, don't have any blocking boards anymore. Well, now I do, um, but I didn't. <laughs> Um, and they were going to be part of my tutorial when it came to the Magic Memory Afghan, which is the crochet along I'm doing right now. And if you want to join that crochet along, it's very slow paced, so you should be able to join that. And um, there will be a pop up at the end of this video that will um, link you to that crochet along. Um, it'll start with the introduction and the in introduction just tells you how to pick your colors and then we are making several squares and the next one is coming out on Thursday. So just keep that in mind. I, I mean Thursday from the time that this video is being filmed. So the book that I wanted to show you guys is called Curvy Girl Crochet. Um, it's 25 patterns that fit in flatter and you know, um, some of us are curvy girls, <laughs> some of us aren't curvy girls, but we want to um, know how to take measurements for different kinds of projects. So even if you aren't, for example, plus size or something like that, it doesn't, that doesn't matter. This book will teach you how to adjust um, a pattern for your for size. And I think that that's really cool. So I've already flipped through it a little bit, so I, and I'm going to flip through it with you guys, but I just wanted to tell you, um, at first we've got this Curvy Girl Crochet. It's by Mary Beth Temple. Um, it has this beautiful design. All of them were de designed by her. And if we turn to the back, you can see some of the other designs here. All of the designs are great. They really are. They're really amazing. Um, and um, the only thing I would say is that the cover and the pages are not as um, sturdy as what I'm used to. I'm not saying that that's a negative necessarily. Um, for me, that doesn't bother me because I'm very gentle with my books. But for those of you who, um, you know, maybe aren't so gentle <laughs> with your books, just kind of know that this kind of comes in a less sturdy, um, I mean, it is definitely a paperback. So, Curvy Girl Crochet, we've got all of these amazing patterns that are meant to um, flatter those of us who are plus size are particularly curvy. <laughs> So yeah, um, and she's, she's saying in the introduction, if you put 50 plus size women in a room, no two of them will be plus size in quite the same way. Now that's very true. And it's true of all sizes, actually, I've noticed. Um, but I, you know, as somebody who became plus size after I had my kids and everything, I mean, definitely it's, it's very difficult to find flattering clothes, like even in the store. So I definitely can understand that. So um, what's really interesting is that she, um, she suggests that you measure before you begin and she's got all of these different um, measurements and um, what to measure here, okay? So we've got the bust, the waist, high hip, low hip, bicep, center back, neck to waist, shoulder to shoulder back, and arm length from shoulder and inside arm length from underarm. So there's all sorts of different um, kinds of things. And she also gives you um, clues on exactly how to measure your size. For example, we've got top five rookie measuring mistakes and uh, choosing the best yarn and, and all of that kind of stuff. So um, you also have all of that and even yarn tips and all of that kind of good stuff. So. Um, so now that you have found your fit, then she talks about using gauge swatches, hooks, 
blocking, which I just showed you guys some blocking books. Um, how to modify for ease. Now ease is how much extra room you have in your clothes when you are making a wearable. So um, a close fitting garment will have one to two inches of ease, uh, which means you basically can move around in that garment um, within about two inches. Um, and then you can have like an oversized, you know, those big oversized sweaters that you see people wear um, in movies when they hold their hot chocolate with both hands and, and it's all cute and everything. So oversized is six inches of ease or more than we've got. We've got more and less of that. Um, so. Um, of course, you know, she's also talking about how to shape and how to modify for fit um, and how to add or sub subtract stitches. All of these things are really important when you are making um, a wearable for yourself. And I can say that for myself, when I make wearables for me, I do this. Um, but then again, when I make wearables for me, you know, lately I've been thinking, well, I want to make a wearable, but I also want to teach people on the channel how to make it. So I've been kind of um, experimenting with different ways to help you guys measure yourself so that the wearable is adjustable to you and also find quick ways to measure for other people so that you're able to um, get a good idea of what to make if you're making a wearable as a gift. So um, I've been messing around with that a lot. and. Um, you know, she's got some really great, you know, really great tips here. For example, right here, it says the sleeves need to be crocheted one and a half inches longer than designated in the patterns. That's for me, always, always a, um, nice touch. I, I like longer sleeves pers personally. So, um, now we start the essential pullover. Now, um, this is a pretty standard, um, <laughs> this is a pretty standard style. I really like the way that she made this though. Um, it definitely does flatter and you know we've got all the different all the different ways that you can make it. Now now her plus sizes are from large to 5x, okay? So if you are wondering, you know, well, can, could I purchase this book and could it work for me? Um, you can get it if you're a size larger up. Um, but if you are a size medium or lower, she gives you the directions on how to subtract and add stitches at the very beginning of the book. So you could probably go with it even if you are a smaller size. Um, so I just wanted to point that out first here. So yeah, she, she um, talks about all the different parts that you make and then how to shape for different um, places on you know, for example, we've got shoulder shaping, you know, and, and the front, and then of course you make two sleeves and then assembling it to all together. Um, and then we have this cow neck pullover, which is very pretty. Um, and again, she's just got, you know, all of the different things spelled out. I really love the picture that is on the front of this. I just really, really love this, the design element here. Um, and I like, I like, I like the color. Um, so she's got the whole, um, she's got the whole thing for this particular shirt, which I think is really pretty. It's a really pretty, well, it's, it's really a sweater. It's a tunic sweater, really. I love it. I think that that's so pretty. So she has a progressive tunic. So this is just, you know, a nice um, sleeveless um, tunic, which I think is really pretty. Um, now she's going to tell you the yarn that she uses, okay, um, in this, okay, she's, she's got it right here. Um, but of course you can pick your own colors and uh, just kind of match it for weight if you want um, to find your own colors for this. But of course, you know, this is really nice and it shows exactly how it is shaped. Um, and, and just notice she's got that, that dip right here in the hip. Um, which is always nice. Um, she's got this little area here. Um, usually when you are first starting out learning wearables, you don't shape with, for that part, for example, and you don't shape for the hips and everything, but this makes it very easy and simple to do, um, even in some of those standard patterns that you'll see, um, like the simple raglan top. So I really, I really like this counterpoint pullover. It's just got this mesh sleeve. You know, that's, that's really, 
um, exactly how she does it. But yeah, I mean, and I, again, she, she talks about waist shaping, bust shaping, and all of that kind of stuff. It's always, it's just so nice to be able to have that. Um, I think it's so cool. Um, and so she goes through all of that with this. And I also like that she includes diagrams as well. I personally don't read diagrams. I can, but I don't read diagrams when I'm looking at um, patterns. I typically just read the, the rows, but sometimes the diagrams can help clarify. Um, I, I really think this one's pretty. In fact, I wonder what it would look like to, um, not, I mean, just make it exactly this way, but also include a belt in that contrast color. I think that that would be cool. Um, of course, making belts in crochet is a little bit different. Um, you can crochet a belt um, with like a double crochet or a single crochet and, and that would probably work fine but there's different methods you can use for that and I'll be able to teach you that later on um, when I do a tutorial on that. So I really like this tank top um, and if you if you look close enough you can see the stitches but it's not um, I mean the the kind of stitch she uses I'm not quite certain what the name of it is Let's see if it says, yeah, she doesn't say what stitch it is, but I recognize this as being a specific stylized stitch. I mean, I recognize the stitch. It's kind of hard to see because it's black, but if I kind of put that closer up to you in that light that I have going on there, you can see that there's some detail to that stitch. I like that. I think that that's nice. Um, it's an A-line um, tank top. And so this is the stitch diagram. So yeah, and the, <laughs> I love this one. I love this. Um, it's like a shell stitch here um, in this in this shirt. I think that's really pretty. Um, I personally would want to add sleeves to this, but the way that um, design works is if you know how to add sleeves in a different stitch, then you can add it in the same stitch that you're using. Um, and, and again, it's, it really, design might seem like it's more difficult. Um, and of course, following the pattern exactly is something that, you know, some people are very particular about that, which is fine. That's, that's a fine way of doing it. But for me, it's like, I'll take the pattern, but then I'll be like, but I want sleeves on this one. And I'd like them to have this little, um, shell. So I will, I would make the sleeves and then I would look at the pattern for, um, really rounding out this shell and then have that as my sleeves there. I don't personally tend to wear a whole lot of sleeveless tops. Um, but I still appreciate this design. Again, she's got the stitch diagram for that again. And again, she's got that bottom edging and that's what I was talking about, um, with making the, the arms for this. So we have this orange marmalade shell. I really, really like this design. I don't particularly like this color. Um, well, for me, I mean, I like the color. The colors are great. <laughs> but for me personally, I don't really like this color, but I do think that this is very pretty. I like how it's just kind of this lattice um, stitch, and then she's got the ribbing at the end. That's really pretty. Um, you know, all of these skill levels, I keep looking at them as easy. So these should be relatively easy to do. Now, um, this part, this ribbing right here, um, it looks like she just um, sewed buttons on there. So the, the buttons are more of a stylistic design rather than something necessary, which I kind of like that. Cardigans, coats, and jackets. She's got some really great great ones of this. I know I like this and it's got a simple Pico um, border um, and the Pico stitch is pretty easy to to make and looking at this it looks like she's just using a double crochet and then a single crochet to round out the sides here and then she's got a Pico stitch right around there and she has made buttonholes um, so that it can be buttoned together. Um, that's really I, I like that one it's really pretty. Um, so we've got, you know, again, all of this, all of this stuff, assembling them, you know, it can, it can be, um, 
kind of scary when you make your first wearable that you have to kind of sew together. You don't necessarily have to sew it though. There are certain stitches that you can use to um, join that um, end up making a really pretty join. For example, a slip stitch join is where you take where you take the two edges and you put them together and then you slip stitch through each one. Um, so that's one of the ways that you can join. Um, and I have a cardigan tutorial that I'm going to be posting sometime this week and I will teach you guys how to join using that method um, or the single crochet method. So here we have a wrap cardigan. I, I always like these wrap these wraps. I think that I would use a little bit more of a frilly edging right here personally. That would be my more my style and I might even rather have buttons here instead of a tie. Um, but again I would be able to modify that this for that um, desire. I love the stitch that she's got and I also love the color combinations how she's got two different colors. I really think this is a beautiful um, cardigan. Every single one of these I think is beautiful actually. <laughs> but yeah I really like this one. And so we've got different angles in the pictures and again she's got every single piece and how to shape them together. I also really like how she um, shows how um, how this looks as far as you know how it's how it's put together in that way too I think that that's important now this one I really love this is a called the comely cardigan um, I really love this stitch that she uses I can't tell if it's an extended double crochet or if it's a triple crochet I mean I could look I could look in here but I'm, I'm not I'm not gonna um, talk about this now this is is an intermediate skill level um, and the reason for that is probably because you have to increase as you're going up or if, if it starts from the bottom and goes up, then you decrease. Um, but that's not really that hard. Um, really sometimes, sometimes I'll increase and de decrease without even meaning to. <laughs> <laughs> so I definitely know how, right? Um, so yeah, this ribbing typically is used um, either making a single crochet and doing the back loop in the single crochet for just a, a small stretch and then you make it until it fits around that way. Or you can do that ribbing by alternating between front post and back post double crochets. Okay, so we have a striped jacket coming up. Yeah, I, I really love this design. I personally don't like the color work in this, but I do like the design where we've got this mesh part right here, and then we've got um, the closed part around the areas where it really matters, you know, where you, where you wanna keep warm. So yeah, I really like this. I like this design a lot. I think that it would also look good if you made a mesh belt to, to go around that as well. Um, so yeah. So she shows you exactly how to make that as well. I love this one, intertwined poncho. So it looks like she's got some cables going on and um, cable stitching in crochet is actually not as hard as it might seem. And it looks really beautiful and everything, um, but it's really, really not that hard. Um, what makes this, this work though, is that we've got, if you notice here, we've got the rows going, um, it going this way and here we've got the rows going this way so what it is is that you end up making one um, one piece it's kind of like a blanket and you wrap it around yourself and then right here you can pin it together um, so that's how that works at least that's the way it looks like it works we will see yep so you've got this really pretty really beautiful and I think it looks good in this color by the way too so we have a pea coat. Now, you know, making these kinds of cardigans with a little um, pocket and everything is always nice. I personally have never made a cardigan out of bulky weight, but it does look like she uses at least a weight five. Oh, a weight. She says that um, she's using Premier Yarn Serenity Chunky. So she's using a chunky weight. That would be a weight six to make this. I'm sure that that's very, very warm though. And I love how we've got this, these cuffs on the arm. Um, typically what I would do personally um, for my style is that I would make the cuffs a different color and I would make the pockets the same different color as the cuffs. I might even go around um, the top with that same different color. 
So just it just you know showing you what I what I would like, but I'd also like that this is a button up as well. And of course you need buttons to have a peak coat, right? Oh, look at that, that style right there. That's pretty. Okay, and then we've got this cloak. I am so excited because I've been making cloaks and I cannot wait to make more. Now, <laughs> these right here, they, those look kind of uncomfortable, don't they? <laughs> but to each their own, and this is definitely a beautiful pattern. Um, I love I love cloaks, and I, I've always wanted to make cloaks for myself. And um, I haven't finished one yet, but I, I do have one in the works right now that I'm trying to make so that um, people can measure themselves and... Um, and make them that way. So now we have wraps, bags, and accessories. So, you know, we've got a, f a few, um, like this is a nice, um, it's kind of like a shawl slash scarf at the same time. So yeah, it's got this kind of, this edging right here. In fact, it shows you exactly how you put it together like that, which is really cool. And then we have this cowl. I, I want to make something like this. I've never made a cowl. And, and I want to put put buttons on it as well. Now I've made a poncho. <laughs> and I've made a scarf. But I've never made a cowl. So I'm, I'm really excited to um, make one of these. And I really think that these colors look really good. Um, not just on the model. But I think that they would even look good with my skin. Typically these kinds of colors look good against my kind of olive complexion. <laughs> so yeah, I really like how that, how that looks. Oh, isn't that beautiful? This is a wrap. Um, and it looks like it has little flowers in it, doesn't it? Oh, it's so pretty. I love that. Now this is an intermediate skill. And I think I saw another intermediate one um, before, but most of these are easy. Um, but you know what? Once you are familiar with reading patterns and you start you know your first couple ones by the time you get to the intermediate skill it feels just the same as any others so yeah this is really pretty so it looks like it is made out of a bunch of these flowers that are then assembled like that oh my gosh and it looks like there's 116 i wonder if there's a way to make this continuous um, that can be, that can be a bit of a challenge when you're, when you're taking like a granny square, for example, and, and you've got to make it like more continuous so, to help the, the style be, um, maybe a little bit easier, but this is definitely a way that, uh, you can join, um, these different flowers together and it certainly looks beautiful. No, I really like this one. I really like it. I just love that that pattern right here it it makes a really great accessory definitely um and this is an easy pattern and just look at that that's how easy it is as far as the, this is a diagram so it just kind of shows you how easy that stitch is um the way that this stitch is made reminds me a lot of um some elements in divine in the divine hat um so that's something to kind of think about if you want to make something like this this is so cute. I've never, I've never been able to pull off these kinds of, these kinds of shirts. Or I guess they're called shrugs. Um, but it's, it's just so cute. I really like that. In fact, I might make something that's like the top like this, and then it goes down and it's solid, um, going all the way down. I think that would actually look really cute. And then of course you'd want to wear something <laughs> underneath it right <laughs> but anyway yeah I, I like this one um, this is also an intermediate skill level um, although it does look like it's pretty easy and it certainly is pretty oh I like that how that's filled up see that's another thing the design element there is that that's filled up wouldn't that be pretty if it just kept going and I'm sure um, that if you want to make it longer, you can just keep going with that pattern. That's really pretty. Then we have this scarf. It's a pretty scarf. And then we have some bags. Here's a carry-all. And now I can't tell if this is felted or not, but I'm pretty certain it's felted. Now, you can use wool that's not super wash, and you can felt it. Um, 
but there's there's a whole different world when it comes to felting because when you felt it gets smaller and all of that kind of stuff so you've got to be kind of careful when you're doing that but as long as you know what you're doing you can make some really great projects by felting now we've got a skirt here and i have not made a skirt before just a skirt um but i am uh, currently thinking about how to design a sweater dress and uh, I think this might come next it's definitely very pretty I wouldn't have thought to make it to where it wraps around like that and I would see how that would make me feel a lot more I guess protected <laughs> because just one single one single skirt would be um, I'd be afraid that it would be too see-through but I think that that's really pretty let me hold it up so you guys can see some more of the details there very pretty and it definitely works with this outfit here it looks good so how doesn't that look nice and curvy there so yeah um again really really love that and then we've got this vest and this looks like one of those vests it would be really easy it looks like it's just made up of v stitches and then single crochet rows alternating between the v stitch and the single crochet rows but it's definitely very pretty. So we've got techniques and stitches here. Um, she even talks about stringing the beads, um, different kinds of sizing charts, which is nice. Um, stitch diagram key, you know, it's always nice to have these. Um, so yeah, so apparently she's got beginner, easy, and intermediate. So um, just to kind of keep that in mind. Yeah. And then the hook sizing and abbreviations. And then she's got different, um, she's got the different yarn information. And I would assume this is for the yarn that she used for her patterns. Metric equivalency charts are always nice. Um, and then she's got the standard yarn weights. And then here's a project index where you can look up each project here. Very nice. And we are done with the book. So um, definitely, if you like these patterns, I would say this is definitely a must have. For me, I would rate this like five out of five just because for me personally, I always love to learn how to design in different ways. And I think there's a few things that I can learn from this. Um, of course, I when I'm designing for myself, I have myself there and I already know my measurements so I can design for my measurements. But being able to alter the pattern so that I can meet somebody else's measurements, even if it's um, like my daughter who is like very, very um, skinny, <laughs> you know, it's, it's nice to be able to take something that looks good on me and then be able to make that for my daughter who's just a completely different shape than I am um, at this point in her life time. <laughs> so um, that said, I hope you enjoyed looking through this book with me. I would definitely recommend this. Um, this is available on um, Amazon and I will put a link to that to um, this book on Amazon in the description. I can say I do not have any affiliates with with Amazon or any other company. I um, I, I live in Arkansas and Arkansas doesn't allow that. <laughs> so I won't make any money from it if you if you follow it. But um, I will put a link in there so that you can find it very easily. Um, that said, thank you guys so much for watching this video all the way to the end. I've got a giveaway going on. So make sure that you find that video when you enter to win. And I will see you soon with another video. Bye for now.